Well, hello again. Welcome to Horror in Detail. Today we are going to share Wendigo encounter stories. First story. This story was shared by you slash Keeper of Nightfall. My local Wendigo. Well after all my years of supernatural encounters I am finally making a Reddit account to post my stories. This is my most recent Wendigo encounter in DeWitt County, Texas. January 12, 2019 around 8 p.m. Now I'm gonna be honest. I chose to go out on this particular night because my town was having a little ghost tour at the haunted hospital. I was lonely and wanted to at least see others having fun. It was 8 p.m. when I left the house and planned to be back within an hour. I have a routine of circling my town in the evening because I just like patrolling and there's always things creeping about after nightfall. I made my way to the haunted hospital and once I got there I saw flashlights inside the windows and heard laughter. That's nice, I thought. Seeing others have fun made me smile and got rid of some of the loneliness I was feeling. This was the halfway point of my walk and I started my second half heading home now. There were some woods on the opposite side of town now but nothing impressive until I got to the last quarter of my walk. Now I was passing the baseball field on my left with a large wheat field on my right. This wheat field used to be a large extension of the woods but was cleared out for growing wheat. I continued again and crossed the small bridge that went over a creek and passed another section of woods. I was now headed towards an old metal building that has recently been turned into a place for making gates and fences. It was about 9 p.m. now. This building had two small white houses beside it and a stretch of dirt road wrapping around the backside of it before returning to normal asphalt road. Now at night this place seems pretty scary but this was one of my favorite places to hang out at night and is a normal path I take my walks through. As I was coming up to the dirt road I saw a very tall 8 to 10 foot pale figure, with lanky arms almost dragging the ground, about 40 feet ahead of me briskly walk from the white houses to the woods. I stopped walking. What was that, I thought. Its size confused me so much that I had forgotten my previous encounters with a smaller version of it. After a few minutes of standing there I convinced myself to continue walking forward. I mean I was an adventurous person and there's no way I was just going to turn tail and go home when I just saw something so odd and out of place. Not even 15 seconds into walking forward this sudden heavy sense of dread overcame me like a giant weight crashing down on my shoulders. My instincts were telling me something was really really wrong. I turned my iPhone light on and shined it at the woods. Nothing. I kept walking while keeping my head on a swivel looking in all directions to keep my surroundings in check. About the fifth or sixth time I looked at the woods I saw it. A huge bleached white humanoid figure crouched on all fours. It was easily still five to six feet tall even though it was bent over. Its black eyes paralyzed me. It had a big round bald head and an extremely emaciated body, void of all hair with very long almost dislocated looking arms and legs. Its legs were like a flamingo bird's at the knee as it bent backwards instead of forward. I took all this in in a matter of seconds. Suddenly it reminded me of a praying mantis when it swayed back and forth while staring as if deciding whether to attack or not. This broke me out of my trance and I ran as fast as I could. I didn't look back until I had ran a block. Out of breath and scared as heck I finally took a glance back. I didn't see anything in sight. I didn't hear it chase me either. Maybe it was just stalking those people in those two little white houses and was waiting for me to go away to go back to its business. Maybe it didn't want anything to do with me. But that wasn't the end. I got home, took a shower and turned out the lights before I hopped in bed when suddenly there was something tapping on my window. Tap tap tap. Three taps and nothing else. I laid in my bed that night wondering whether it had followed me home or not. 
A string of bad luck ensued afterwards the following weeks. I was constantly burning stuff on the stove that was relatively easy to make and I was an excellent cook on top of that. My dog started going nuts at night growling and barking at night in the living room and at the front door, which she has never ever done as she is the quietest sweetest dog you'll ever meet. And finally I got deathly sick for three weeks straight with no sure sign of what I had gotten. 103 fever, vomiting with blood, diarrhea with blood, sneezing, coughing, sore throat, migraines, nerve spasms, stuffy and dry nose, it changed constantly, severe stomach aches, aching all over really especially in my bones, other lesser entities taking advantage of my state trying to latch onto me, and slight insomnia. I've had smaller strings of bad luck before, after hearing its mimicry trying to lure me into the forest or seeing it one other time but I didn't see any details, but nothing ever this extreme. I don't go into the woods alone anymore. Sorry it's been so long guys. After talking to people who know about and study this type of thing we've come to the solution it may have been a forest giant. A subcategory of fairy or fae. They have many names and they are not what you expect. I also came to the conclusion there may have been a small one living my house for years. It has been gone for a good while now though. Second story. This story was shared by you slash Aslansticks. Blasphemy brings Wendigos. I do not know where else to go. At this point I feel as if even speaking about this will make it worse. I should have never allowed myself to get involved in something I knew was wrong. We aren't supposed to speak of it. I am hoping that not speaking aloud of what I have witnessed will nullify the curse. I am assuming it's a curse. The Wendigo has appeared in my small rural community. We are so far from humanity that we could actually be considered our own little country. We have our own tiny clinic, we grow our own food, we have our own little church. We have our own little world. What I saw though, threatens to rip this little world asunder. Lord help us all. I know how it happened. I was there for the whole thing. This may be terribly disturbing to some people so, please, take care. Come on Zachariah. I don't think this is a good idea. You know it's blasphemy to talk against God. I tell him, a quiet plea dropped within. He smirks at me and shrugs, I just want to go hear what they have to say. I scoff at him, they are outsiders Zack. This isn't funny. Mother will be terribly mad. He shrugs at me again and walks towards the edge of the trees. He turns halfway to look over his shoulder at me. His dark hair sways in the wind, large black eyes twinkling with mischief. Are you going to come with me Cherries? He asks. A niggling feeling in my gut tells me that no good could come of going to hear a blasphemer. That in the very least, we would upset God and suffer personal repercussions. Still, if my brother is going to go, I should follow, if only so he has someone to share in his misery. That is what family does. I sigh deeply and nod. Following close behind him we traverse through the trees. Somewhere beyond the thick undergrowth and winding trails lie a clearing. It is here I am astonished to see much of our town. Led here by curiosity, fear, disdain. Here many of my friends stand, their parents, even a few town elders. No good can come from this. I muse to myself. A shiver chasing its way up my spine. The man before us and his three women begin to, for the lack of a better word, preach about their beliefs. I didn't really listen but, I could hear the murmurings of disbelief and some of revelation. Instead of listening to the babbling any longer I turn and walk back through the trees. Stepping into them I can feel a chill settling into my bones. A sick and very unfriendly feeling sitting deep in my stomach. I speed up. Something is very very wrong. The moment I burst from the tree lean, 
back into my town I freeze. I quickly step back into the tree cover. A creature towers over the mutilated body of one of the remaining townsfolk. Its skull-like face coated in thick blood, steaming almost from the warmth. Hollow eyes shine red in the dark, sharp teeth tearing into the human's flesh and bone. Sickening crunches and clicks as its jaw closes and opens. Its furred body is marred with slick crimson, long gangly limbs bent at odd angles. I try to keep my breathing shallow and quickly crouch down. I have to minimize myself to avoid suffering the same fate. The smell alone is enough for me to struggle against my gag reflex. Blood, decay, and death riding on the mostly still air. Lingering as if it was a living entity all on its own. The creature stands and makes a low, wah-wah-wah sound. Almost too deep to be heard. It hurts my ears, causing them to throb with each wah. I watch as it slowly lumbers towards the trees on the opposite side of the clearing. Each step jolting and stilted. As if its limbs were improperly attached to its hips. As it vanishes I slowly stand and wait. Holding my breath in fear. It's quite some time before I hear noise behind me. Still I cannot move, cannot look away. Such carnage lay before me. Something evil was eating people and I saw it. The shock had settled into my system and I could not shake it off. A hand on my shoulder jolts me, awake. What are you? A familiar voice trails off. Screams fill the air and people rush out into our town, searching for the people they left behind. I move almost mechanically as I run to my house. The shock removing my typical feelings of panic and fear. I simply needed to know. Would they still be alive? Littering the front yard are the mangled corpses of my siblings. My mother. Something in me clicks and I scream. Pure anguish echoing through the wooded area. I scream and scream while my brother sits on the ground crying. Shaking, I leave my brother and begin to gently pick up the remains of my youngest sister. I carry her pieces into the house, bundling her in a towel and continue to do the same for my two other siblings. Then, my very own mother. I cry as I cover their bodies and fetch a shovel. At this point my brother has joined me. He gently totes their bodies to the far back corner of the yard where I am digging crude graves. It takes a little while. The shovel in my hands thudding against the mildly frozen ground. Each splinter and aching muscle a faint thing in the back of my head. Slowly, we place them in their spots. Covering them in the clay-thick dirt. My heart pangs with each shovel full. Tears running unbidden down my face. The moment we are finished, I slump down to my knees, my hands clasped. I pray. I pray with all my heart. My words running together as I go. Stuttering and sputtering out our traditional prayers. I pray until the stars come out and my body shakes from lack of food and rest. My brother had long returned to the house. I jump when a warm hand lands on my back. Rubbing soothingly. Hey, you need to eat. You're freezing. Mom wouldn't be happy if you stayed like this. Zack gently tells me. I slowly and stiffly stand up. Every joint and muscle screaming with the sudden movement. My legs are quite asleep and I have to wait for a moment before I can walk properly. As I stand with my brother looking me over, I look into the trees just beyond the border of our yard. There, watching me, is the beast I had watched devour one of my neighbors. I glare at it. In that very moment, fear was the last thing in my heart and mind. No. For the first time, I was full of hate. Of the want to destroy something. A voracious monster lurked within my very bones as I made eye contact with that thing. That hideous creature. The moment my brother looks over, 
it simply vanishes from sight. Let's go. He takes my hand and leads me inside. You need to go wash up before you sit down to eat okay? I nod and silently walk to my room, grabbing a quick set of clothes and stepping into the bathroom. My mind simply carries me through the functions of showering and dressing. There is no conversation over our dinner. No loving stories before bed. There is no peace for our minds as we lay down to sleep. Paranoia eating at us. When will they come back? How do we protect ourselves? How do we save the town? Is God angry? Is this his wrath? The moment the sun rises, I am up and down the road. I need our weapons. Those fuckers are going to die. I also decide there has to be someone that knows how to kill these things. I ask around, many people are beyond communicating. Going through rites for their deceased loved ones and dying from grief. I ask after our elders and find them in the center house. How do I kill them? I ask abruptly, shoving open the doors. The two elderly men look at me with varying degrees of surprise and annoyance. You don't. One replies. A woman could not easily take the Wendigo on. Stupid backward thinking of the older generation. I didn't ask you for permission. I asked how. While all of you sit about and mourn the dead, someone needs to hunt those fuckers down. Before we all land up monster fodder. After a brief discussion I find myself with rope, knife, and gun in hand. Days pass. Weeks. No sign of them. Not beyond the low murmuring in the trees. Our food is running really really low. If we cannot manage to get food soon. We may starve with winter fast approaching. Walking out to feed our meager group of chickens I stare at the demolished hen house with mild horror and deep dread. Deep claw marks lay within the wood. Large cloven hoof prints mar the bloody ground. No. They are going to starve us. We can't wait around anymore. We can't. I pack some meager provisions and supplies. Char. You can't hunt them. They aren't deer. Think about this. Zack yells at me as I stand in the doorway, twilight behind me. We can't keep hiding and hoping they went away. We know they haven't. They are killing our crops, our livestock. Men have gone missing. Children. Women. He shudders and nods a bit, fine. I'm coming with you. We head out after he packs and start into the woods. A mile or so into the trees the telltale sound begins. Wah. 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 I tense and ready myself. Wait, it's coming from. I slowly turn to where my brother should have been. My eyes widening as I watch his skin rip and tear. Shredding and splattering hot, rancid blood all over myself and the ground. Char, it croons at me. I step back, stumbling a bit on a branch. Char don't go. My brother's voice calls from the hollow skull. No. No. Zack. I scream at the creature. Wah. 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 It's laughing. Stupid child. All alone. All alone. Again. Something clicks and I raise my gun, hand unwavering as I empty the six shots into the empty husk. It squeals and jerks with each bullet. While it's off balance I fling the rope out and pull with all my force. Pulling it from its feet. It slams into the ground and swings its arm out. It slams into my shins and sweeps my feet from beneath me. I scream and try to jolt back to my feet. It thrashes against the handmade rope, the steel wire burning its flesh. I jump upon it and slam my blade into its chest, 
prying open the ribs with all my force. I quickly reach in, my hand clasping the frozen and collapsed heart. Yanking I fall back. It lets go with a dull, plunk. I hiss as it burns my hand but, run for my bag as the creature squeals and screams. I grab my homemade blowtorch and set to burning it to a crisp. The darker it gets the less the monster struggles. Soon. It is gone. My brother. Gone. I can hear the others as they come towards me. Now I type. I tell you what has happened as far as they fast approach my spot. Lord help our little town and please give me the strength to kill these fuckers. Set us free. If you have read this. I made it. I plan to tell the world of my victory, only if I survived. Don't go against your gut. You may just land up allowing a wendigo in. Third story. This story was shared by you slash independent, focus 108. Did we avoid a wendigo? This is my first post, so bear with me. Let me begin with some background info. My boyfriend, best friend, and I are from a tiny town in Pennsylvania. We were invited to spend a week with our best friend's grandparents in Michigan who live in the forest. There are trails that stretch for miles and a giant lake in the middle of it where we have only seen swans chilling in. The biggest problem in these forests are ticks. Right? We arrived in Michigan on Saturday. Today is Thursday and last night, Wednesday night, around 1 a.m., my boyfriend, Z, and best friend, B, and I were smoking a joint in front of the forest near the trail entrance. We wanted to stargaze and watch deer, plus we weren't allowed to smoke on B's grandparents' property. During the beginning of us setting up, the wind was blowing against our backs as we faced the forest. We were joking around, trying to smoke while shivering, and just having a nice conversation while standing around. We stood in a diagonal line and heard rustling. I jokingly said, what if it's a skinwalker? Our senses were heightened because we didn't want B's grandparents to know we left in the middle of the night. They're old and old-fashioned, so when they don't know we're home or not, they will spam B's phone asking where he is. After B checked his phone over ten times, him and I heard a female voice in the distance directly where their house was. We were about 200 feet away from the property. B heard his grandmother's voice clearly. Very clearly, calling out our names in order. B. M. Z. Come inside. This was unusual, because before we left the house all the lights were off and they were asleep by that time. We made sure. After the voice cut off, we heard more very loud rustling in the woods right in front of us. Like ten feet and it sounded like heavy footsteps trampling through the brush. We were silent for a couple minutes, listening to the sounds of the dead leaves being crunched and it sounded like someone was trying to watch us through the trees. It was louder than what a deer would make, or a bear. There were no noises, growling, or anything. Just the instance of something large walking around. The wind also did a 180 change of direction. It was now blowing against the front of us instead of our backs. B immediately turned his phone flashlight on and yelled, Hey! About three times. During the yelling and pauses, the footsteps quickened and seemed hesitant to leave the area in front of us. It sounded like two feet, not four like an animal, and it started to run towards the lake. Before this, I should mention that the sounds of the swans honking were nice and peaceful. Then, when the entity or whatever it was began to run away scared, the swans were shouting and yelling. They were absolutely going crazy. The lake was far from us, and the water level had fallen. Bushes and random trees were in the way before you could reach the water, but when the entity ran towards it, we heard the splashing as if it was right next to us. It was that loud. So loud we could hear each trudge through the water individually. Our fight or flight kicked in, 
and we all kept our flashlights on towards the forest. I checked behind us, opened all the car doors so we could dart in if needed, and kept talking at a loud volume to keep whatever it was away. Once they were in the water, the swans were screaming and seemed to leave. The sounds of trudging through water died quickly, and everything was silent again. We left immediately and went home. All of us were quiet and tired. It was like we didn't even get the effect of THC because of how scared we felt. Fourth story. This story was shared by you slash Deadenspread. The whispers in the woods. I looked down at my compass which was shifting steadily between north and west, seeming unable to decide which direction I was facing. Through the trees I could see the sun was setting but was unable to actually pinpoint where it was dipping below the horizon, due to the forest canopy and a storm I could see rolling in over the hills. This was the moment I knew that I was fucked. I'd gone too far off the trail, my compass wasn't working for some reason, I couldn't navigate by the sun and even if I could it was rapidly vanishing, and lightning started to streak across the sky. I thought I knew the score, that I was prepared, that nothing bad could happen to me. I know now though that in the wilderness the score is not something you can ever really know. I really hate when you do this, Nate. I could hear my wife's voice in my head as I slid the compass back into my pocket and leaned against a tree. I needed to think of what to do next, but all I could hear was her voice. I hate when you go hiking by yourself. I'll be fine Marie, I promise. I told her, so sure of myself. So damn sure. I've done these hikes a hundred times and I always come back. What if you get hurt, or lost, or a bear attacks you? She gripped my arm and shook me. An uneasy smile on her face to show she was joking about the bear, but not really. I swear to you, I'll be okay. I pulled her in and hugged her, I felt her hands grip my back as she pressed her face into my chest like it might be the last time. I just need to get away for the day, clear my head. I kissed the top of her head and ran my hands through her hair. Can't you clear your head at a golf course? She spoke softly into my shirt. You know I hate that shit. Besides, I look terrible in those plaid pants. We both laughed a bit and she ended hers with a sigh, she wouldn't stop me, she never did. You have fun with your girlfriends tomorrow, I'll be home in time for us to grab a late dinner. Promise. There I was though, with twilight turning into night and the sound of rain pattering the trees around me. I should have been on the road to be home for that late dinner I promised, but I wasn't going to make it. A clap of thunder shook me from my memory and back to the harsh reality of my current situation. I was fucking lost. The rain was coming down harder now and after several desperate attempts to call Marie or emergency services with the extremely weak signal on my phone I gave up. I found shelter in a small alcove next to a pine tree and blocked myself in with my pack. It was starting to get cold and I was wet so I covered myself with pine needles and willow branches, the alcove had some that were still dry, in an attempt to gain some measure of warmth. Out of curiosity I checked my compass again only to see it was now spinning around wildly in an attempt to find north. I watched it jump back and forth between the letters going clockwise for a second and then changing direction on a dime and going the other way. Never, wheat, eat sour, eat, never, eat, sour, wheat. I said the words from the old mnemonic device in my head each time it stopped on a letter before whispering to myself what I was really thinking. This is wrong. Of course it's wrong, you are lost in the woods you idiot. My wife's voice said from somewhere deeper in my head. Some kind of magnetic field fucked with your compass and now you're never coming home. It wasn't just that though, it was how I got lost. I'd been in these hills hundreds of times and never had any problem with my compass. What magnetic field? Did it come from the storm? Even beyond that, 
there was an underlying sense of dread in the middle of my chest that came from more than the fear of being lost and alone. In fact that was exactly the problem, I didn't feel alone at all. I grabbed the canteen from my pack drank a little water as I stared out into the woods. Darkness had finally overtaken everything but my eyes were adjusting enough that I could make out the shapes of the trees that surrounded me. I kept expecting to see the shine of predators' eyes staring back at me when the lightning would bring the world into clear view for a brief moment, or the hulking outline of a bear's shadow getting closer. There was nothing though, no four-legged beasties weaving between the trees on the prowl. What if there is though? My wife's voice spoke again. What if you get attacked by a bear before you can find your way out or get rescued? I'll be fine. I answered the nagging doubt in my mind as if it were actually my wife. I just need to make it till morning and hopefully the storm will clear and I can navigate by the sun. I grabbed a protein bar from my bag and took a bite. Trying to convince myself of my own words. Maybe in the morning my compass would work, never, wheat, sour, wheat, never, or at the very least I could hike to higher ground and figure out where the trail was. I'm not sure how long I sat in my makeshift shelter chewing on my protein bar and trying to convince myself I would be fine but my train of thought was broken by something I certainly didn't expect. I saw something moving towards me through the trees. The outline was looked like a person and it was so unexpected when my eyes caught it that my heart leapt into my throat. It looked like someone with a hood or a rain slicker pulled up over themselves as they walked along through the trees. It made me feel uneasy, there wouldn't be anyone searching for me yet, in fact there was no reason anyone would be out there with me at all. They drew closer and closer and I shrunk back into my alcove hoping I could get a better look at them before I made myself known. When they got within about 10 feet though they stopped dead in their tracks and just stared in my direction. The feeling of dread grew in my chest as the hooded shadow stood silently in the rain. Suddenly the figure raised its arm towards me and clicked on a flashlight. What are you doing out here, son? I heard a gruff older man's voice from behind the flashlight. I pushed my pack out of the way and got to my feet, the man kept his flashlight trained at my face practically blinding me. I got lost out here. My damn compass just went crazy. I shielded my eyes from the light but didn't take any steps closer to him. Are you a park ranger? Can you lower the flashlight please? Yup, I'm a ranger. He laughed a little bit in a way that made me feel uneasy, but didn't lower the flashlight. The hills out here can mess with our compass, especially during a storm. Damn place is full of nickel. Just lower the flashlight please. I shrunk back as he stepped forward keeping the light shining right in my eyes. You're damn lucky I found you, son. He laughed again his gruff voice gaining an octave or two as he did. Damn lucky. Sir, can you help me get back to the road? The light seemed to get even brighter as he walked forward. And please can you just get the light out of my eyes? The whole world seemed to go stark white as he got within arm's length. I suddenly heard my wife's voice again and not inside my head this time, but from the direction of the ranger. You promised you'd be home for dinner. Marie said. You promised me Nate. Suddenly the light clicked off and the world around me was dark again. I rubbed my burning eyes and scanned the blur of shadows for the ranger but I was once again alone. I barely even had time to process what had just happened when I turned towards the alcove only to find that it was no longer there. It was gone, along with my pack, my water, and my food. I pulled my phone out of my pocket and flipped on the flashlight thanking God I'd kept it off all day, the battery was nearly full. I did a full 360 looking for where I had just been but saw only open forest and darkness all around me. My heart began to race and my confused mind struggled to make sense of what in the hell was going on. That's when the whispers began. 
This sounded like an old woman with a creaky voice speaking in a language I didn't know. I tried to pinpoint where they were coming from and as I looked around I noticed symbols carved into the trees that hadn't been there only moments before. I felt like a terrified animal being toyed with by something that planned to make me its dinner when the fun was over. The whispers grew clearer and clearer but came from all around me at once. What the fuck is going on? I shouted at the darkness, proving my utter helplessness. What if you get attacked by a bear? The whispering old woman responded before the whole forest seemed to go silent aside from the rainfall. I realized I was holding my breath waiting for what could possibly happen next. I was unable to grasp my situation at the time, or even now looking back at it. I was frozen in my spot and powerless. That's when I noticed the outline of something large moving slowly between the trees. It turned its head towards me causing the shine its eyes to catch my light. I stared into its killer's eyes for only a few seconds, long enough to know it was fixed on me now. Then it charged. I turned on my heel and tried to break into a run but the thing was on me before I could take two steps. I felt something powerful strike me in the back and send me sprawling into the wet forest floor. A sharp pain filled my body as huge claws tore through my shirt and flesh with little resistance, and warm blood poured from my wounds as I choked on my screams and pathetically attempted to crawl away. I glanced back to see the frothing mouth of a roaring grizzly standing over me. Its fur was matted and patchy and sores seemed to be covering its face. Even while bleeding and staring into the face of that nightmare I could hear the voice of my wife. I told you Nate. I told you not to go. Why don't you listen to me? Her voice was silenced by the sound of my own screams and the bear raked its claws over me again. I was bleeding so badly I no longer had the energy to move and though my wounds felt like fire the rest of me felt like ice. I was lying face down in the forest floor breathing in the smell of the damp earth. I closed my eyes and thought of my wife's face, I saw her crying, I saw her searching for me and finding nothing but a mauled corpse, or worse, nothing at all. I prepared myself to feel the claws tear into my flesh again or to feel the monster bear's jaw wrap around my skull. I'm sorry Marie. I whispered. And then, I opened my eyes. I was no longer face down but staring into the sky feeling the rain pelt me in the face. My body was laid out with my arms and legs fully extended and my jacket and shirt had been removed. Despite the fact that my skin was numb from the cold and my whole body ached I felt something scratching against my skin, like a needle point being drug across my stomach and arms. He's awake. I heard an old woman's voice whisper. He's not supposed to be awake. The sound of the voice made me fight through the sluggishness of my own body and make an effort to sit up. He was held, he should be held, a different woman's voice whispered as I caught glimpses of multiple figures retreating back into the darkness, something in a cloak snuffed out a lantern and walked backwards away from me up a tree with the most unnatural movement I'd ever seen. Confused and scared out of my mind I started examining my body for the wounds from the bear attacks but found something entirely different. Small symbols had been scratched into my skin, the skin around them was inflamed and burned to the touch. I could hear the women's voices whispering to each other, I could make out at least for different voices but couldn't hear what they were saying. What the hell did you do to me? I screamed into the trees as I got to my feet like a drunk. Every limb felt weak and worthless. It was as I stood I noticed that I was standing in the middle of a circle made out of old branches with four straight pieces placed like corners, like a compass. Never, wheat, eat, sour, never, sour, wheat. Just lay back down, Nate. I heard Marie's voice say, but not in my head. It came from the trees. Everything is going to be fine, my love. It was followed by more whispers and hushed laughter. Who are you? What are you doing to me? 
I scratched the symbols on my skin and kicked apart the circle at my feet. The whispers hissed at my actions and I could feel their eyes on me. Bright white lights like the ranger's flashlight darted between the trees and headed in my direction. I stumbled backwards nearly tripping over my own feet and ending up back on the ground, I'm glad I caught myself on a nearby tree or else I may never have got up again. Were your dreams not pleasant, Nathan? One of the old crones spoke as if directly in both of my ears at the same time. More cackling laughter followed and the lights grew closer as I continued to back away. Lay down, honey. Everything's going to be okay. I heard my wife say to me from somewhere out in the darkness. We'll get you home in time for a late dinner after all, kid. The gruff ranger's voice came now, all of the voices felt fake. Like they were recordings being played through a poor speaker. Behind them I could hear the true voices, the whispers. I want his eyes. I want to taste his blood. He's unprepared, so unprepared. How was he not held? He should have thought he was dead. He should have been paralyzed. The lights will hold him again. We shall finish preparing him. Then laughter, that horrid hushed laughter. It was the sound of someone who found genuine joy in my suffering, the whispers were planning to prepare me and eat me. It was hard to say for sure. I didn't know why I could suddenly hear them so well but knowing what was going forced my legs into action. I managed to turn from the direction of the approaching lights and break into a run. I couldn't let them catch me. The one before that had tricked me into thinking it was a ranger hypnotized me somehow, trapped me in some kind of dream state. I needed to get away, I needed to find the road. I was freezing cold and aching but the pain and adrenaline kept me from keeling over and drove me forward. I stole a glance over my shoulder and saw the lights weaving through the trees after me. They had gained too much ground. You need to run. My wife screamed from the back of my mind. Nathan, you need to run like you have never run before. Just lay down and it will all be over soon. Something mimicking my wife's voice echoed through the trees, the tone all wrong, and the pitch just off. Just lay down Nathan, and let me take care of you. I pushed myself faster making my lungs burn. My skin felt like ice aside from where the symbols had been scratched into me, those burned and throbbed like much deeper wounds. I could feel the lights behind me, they were close enough to light the trees ahead of me. I didn't look back. I didn't dare. Out of the corner of my eyes I could see them getting next to me, dodging through the trees with uncanny speed. There was no false ranger attached to them this time, they were nothing but lights floating a few feet off the ground. They were flanking me and pulling ahead, soon I would be trapped back in whatever nightmare they wanted as the whispers crawled from their trees and prepared to butcher me. I needed to get away. Ahead of me was thick underbrush and there was no way to go but through. I lowered my shoulder and closed my eyes as the lights pushed their way further into my cone of vision and started whiting the world out. I felt my body crash into a thick wall of brambles and branches. I kept my eyes shut tight as I pushed through and feeling thorns dig into my skin. Keep going. You have to keep going Nate. Marie spoke calmly in my head now. Soothing me. I gripped my teeth and moved forward feeling fresh blood trickled down my skin. I could see the brightness of the lights through my eyelids, the things were still close. I screamed out as I pulled myself through. Half naked, bleeding, soaked to the bone, and filled with primal terror I finally pushed through to the other side of the underbrush and briefly opened my eyes to get my bearings. I was back on the trail. I had a brief moment of happiness before the lights emerged through the thorns and came straight for me. I shielded my eyes and turned to run down the trail. I could see the glow pulsing behind me as I ran and I could feel the blood, rain, and sweat streaking my skin. 
At the edges of the trail I could see the cloaked figures fading into darkness as the light approached them, they always managed to keep out of sight but I could hear their whispers. You can't leave us Nathan. Nothing can ever leave us. We will be with you always. And one day you will be with us always. Rasping laughter with manic undertones filled my ears as the bottom of the trail and my truck came into sight. I howled with laughter and pushed my legs harder, my chest hurt and the scratches covering my body burned but I was almost there, I was almost safe. Without breaking stride I fished the keys from my pocket and thanked God I hadn't left them in my bag or my jacket. I fumbled with the door lock for a moment as the lights grew intense in my peripheral vision. I got into the truck and slammed the keys into the ignition with howl of victory, but before I could turn the key one of the lights whipped around the front of the truck and hovered just above the hood. It pulsed and radiated with white hot light that burned my eyes. Sleep, Nathan, whispered the false Marie. Drive, Nathan. Screamed the Marie inside my head. I turned the key and shut my eyes tight as the engine roared to life. I growled through my teeth in an attempt to keep hold of my mind as I slammed my foot on the gas and the tires spun to life sending me hurtling down the trail and back towards the road. I opened my eyes to avoid crashing and ending up right back in the nightmare I just escaped and saw the lights vanishing in my rear view. I made it home as the sun was coming up and turning the sky a light gray from behind the clouds. I changed into some fresh clothes that I kept in my truck before going into the house and facing Marie. I collapsed in my wife's arms and was unable to even come up with an explanation as to what happened to me until after I slept for hours. Eventually I told her I'd fallen down a hill and through some thorn bushes, losing my pack and gear and ended up out cold for hours, I didn't know how to tell her the truth without sounding crazy. I readily agreed to never go on a solo hike again when she inevitably asked. Sometimes I wake up screaming, I have dreams about the lights chasing me and hear the whispers asking me to come back. Telling me they're always with me. They tell me other things too. They tell me I never got out, that I'm lying broken on the forest floor at their mercy. They tell me that my blood tastes like copper and fear. They tell me that my wife is not my wife, that my house is not real, and that my world is all their design. Sometimes I wake up with dirt on my feet, or feel random pains in my body. I hear them laugh at me in the moments where I'm weakest. Earlier today Marie called to me from the other room, and her voice seemed far away. Like she was speaking through static, and the whispers laughed. They are always laughing. Fifth story. This story was shared by you slash an outdoors guy. Something followed me in the woods. Hello everyone, I have been an avid Reddit reader for about a year now. I always read r slash nasleep, but I never posted anything myself because there wasn't much to say. That was until my encounter in the woods. I'm leaving my story here because I still want answers. I need answers. I need to know what the fuck is going on. Let me begin by saying I live in the south, so the woods was something I grew up with. I was always an outdoorsman and would often go climbing and exploring in the forests around where I lived. Sometimes I would go out to camp, chopping small trees, making fires, and practicing with my knives and machetes. I was never really scared of anything to be honest, even at a young age. I always carried at least a fixed blade knife with me on my adventures and felt like I could take on anything that came my way. As I grew older I didn't do this kind of thing as much, but I would go hiking quite often. Anyway, a couple of weeks ago on a Sunday, May 3rd, I decided I would go on an afternoon hike just to enjoy being outside. I still enjoyed the woods as much as I had when I was a kid. Now I think I actually appreciate it more. My senses are calibrated a lot better these days, so I am able to take in all the scenery and nature which just feels peaceful. This Sunday seemed just like any other and I got into my car to drive to my hiking spot. 
I'm not a fan of going on official hiking trails because the linear course and other people seem to dilute the wild. My spot is pretty out of the way, about an hour from my home, and no one else would have any reason to go there. It isn't marked at all, no signs, no fences, no footprints, nothing, it is just endless woods for miles and miles. I parked my car a pretty good distance from where I always entered, just in case anyone came by, although the dirt road was always completely deserted. Now that I think about it, I have never seen or even heard a car or other people over there. I set off on my walk through the woods, geared with my trail running shoes, a hat, and my six-inch engraved knife in its sheath on my belt. I strolled along my normal route to start off with an expanse of lush green in all directions. I covered about two miles of flat ground, climbed a twenty-foot boulder wall, and traversed across a small creek. I was just taking in everything around me. The cool breathe of a breeze on my back, the sound of the flowing water filling my ears, and scanning the diverse landscape for any wildlife. I continued on my favorite path, it wasn't really a path, but I knew the woods pretty well at this point. Then I got to an area where I realized I had never gone off to the left. I'm not sure why I never went that way because I had pretty much explored all other directions in the vicinity. Not taking too much time to think about it I headed left into the uncharted horizon. After a few more miles in this new direction I started to get a strange feeling. It was an eerie kind of feeling, like something was off. I realized I hadn't seen or any animals over this way. No birds flying above, no squirrels shuffling on tree branches, not even any bugs making noises. Nothing. I brushed it off and continued my trek. I stopped here and there to examine different things, like strange markings on some of the trees, but there was nothing too exciting over here. I noticed the sun was started to descend and the darkness was creeping in. I had completely lost track of time exploring this new place. I left my home to go on my hike a little afternoon, so I had to have been out there for five or six hours. I remember thinking how strange it was that the moon was already fairly high so early in the day. Time seems to go by in a different manner when I am out in the woods, I don't know why that is. I decided it was time to head back, I would have to hurry because it would be dark soon. I turned and set off in the direction I had come from, at least I thought I was. The woods were a lot denser in this section than the others I had explored in the opposite direction, so it was a lot harder to keep track of where I was. I soon realized I was kind of lost. I must have gotten turned around somewhere. Whenever I am in the woods, even an area I know well, I always leave a trail of some kind to guide me back. Every thirty feet or so I would bend a branch or occasionally make an X on a tree with my knife so it was clear I had been there. I kept trying to trace my steps, but I couldn't find any broken branches and I was getting a bit frustrated. I never made mistakes like this, so what the hell was going on? Just then I saw an X marked on a tree. Ah, there we go, no need to get worked up after all. I walked further looking for more signs. Then I saw another X. Then another. And another. All right. I definitely didn't carve that many trees, and there were still no broken branches at all. I was getting a little worried at this point. I continued on, hoping to see some form of familiarity, but I just kept seeing X markings. They were on almost every tree at this point. Now I know I had never been this far onto this side before, so these markings couldn't have been from me on previous visits. Plus, I would never be so foolish to make that many markings because it would just create confusion. I went to examine one of the markings and quickly realized that they were wider than my knife would cut, and a lot deeper. That's when the feeling hit me again. That eerie sense when you know something is wrong. That feeling that you're not alone. That feeling that you're being watched. Now, like I said, I have always been pretty fearless, 
but I'm not stupid, there are certain situations that even a knife and good instincts can't get you out of. Still, I was determined not to show fear. Maybe if I showed whoever was fucking with me that I wasn't going to take any shit that they would show themselves or leave. The dark was getting thicker by the minute, I needed to get the fuck out of here now. I started walking slowly in what I thought was the right direction, listening for anything abnormal. I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched. At one point I finally thought I was just being paranoid and making shit up. Then I started to hear noises. All while the consuming darkness swept over the forest. The sound started off like small sticks breaking, then scratching of tree bark. Then leaves rustling violently, then branches being torn off trees. I looked in every direction, but it was getting harder and harder to see with night looming down fast and my eyes unadjusted. My hand gripped the hilt of my knife tight and I started moving a faster pace. I was getting really freaked out. The next sound came much louder than all the rest. It sounded closer. I turned to where it was coming from. That's when I saw him. I could barely make out a dark figure off in the distance. The moonlight was beaming down, it was one of the brightest moons I have ever seen. It still provided an illumination through the thick canopy of trees overhead. This guy looked big. Like really big. There was no way I could take a guy that big normally. With a knife I maybe stood a chance. That is if he wasn't armed with anything. I could see him start walking in my direction, getting closer and closer. Then I noticed that he walked in a very strange way and I couldn't see any outline of clothing. He was covered in something. As he moved closer I realized just how big it was. There is no way a man can be that big. There aren't any big game in the area I live. The biggest things we have are deer and coyotes. This thing looked like the size of a bear, but I knew that was impossible. Bears didn't live anywhere near here, like not even in this state. I started walking backwards, drawing my knife slowly, not wanting to take my eyes off of this thing. Just as I pulled my knife fully from the sheath it started running full speed. On all fours. I have never run so fast in my entire life. Within seconds my hat was off my head, falling behind me carelessly. My legs were in overdrive as I sprinted in the opposite direction of whatever animal was chasing me. I wasn't going to stop. There is no fucking way I am going to stop, I told myself. I could hear it behind me, gaining on me with tremendous speed. I was too terrified to look over my shoulder, but I could feel it right on my heels. I started weaving through the trees, still going at full speed. This seemed to throw it off a little, like it didn't expect a good old-fashioned serpentine pattern. I felt it get a little further behind me and continued to dodge and weave through the branches and trees. The sound of branches snapping with ease was the only audible noise in my mind. I still thought I might be able to lose it. That was until I reached a clearing where the small creek stretched through the woods. Open area. Fuck. I at least knew where I was now. I tore through the last of the trees and was making my way to the creek. The creek was pretty wide here, but there were some rocks dividing the water into different streams. I leapt to one rock and then to another. It was too dark to see clearly and I was moving so fast that I didn't have time to check my surroundings appropriately. As my foot hit the second rock I felt it slide out from under me. It felt like I was falling in slow motion and I could clearly hear the beast right behind me. I caught myself with my free arm, but still went face first into the water. Without a second's hesitation I hurled myself back up and jumped out of the creek, all in one fluid motion. I honestly wasn't sure I was going to make it at this point. I could hear intense grunts and growls right on my ass as I tried to start running again. Suddenly. I couldn't go forward. Something pulled me back by my ankle. 
I had almost forgotten the knife clutched like a dagger in my right hand, it was like an extension of my body at this point. I spun on pure instinct as the immense force pulled me back and tried to slash with my blade. I must have hit because I my knife didn't come back as I swung my body in the other direction when the grip on my ankle released. Then I heard the most terrifying cry, sounding like nothing I had ever heard before. It cracked through the silence of the forest creating a void of pure terror. I said I ran faster than I ever had before, but that is not true. In this moment I ran faster than humanly possible. I guess it was that fight or flight response people always talk about. I didn't look back once as the foul cries filled the air. I just ran. After what seemed like hours I finally saw the break in the tree line where the dirt road was. I sprinted on fumes to my car, grabbed the keys from the back tire and took off. As I drove off I could still hear cries and howls in the distance, but nothing else. When I had twisted my body to strike at the creature I got a glimpse of it fully. It was not a bear. It was not a fucking coyote. I don't know what the fuck it was. I had never seen eyes like that. I had never seen teeth like that. The image pulsed through my mind all the way home, but I made it. I made it out alive. I survived. When I got home I took some time to compose myself, sure I was safe. I needed a hot shower to clean off and soothe my terrified mind. It wasn't until I got out of the shower that I noticed the long deep gash on the back of my calf. Maybe I nicked it on something as I was running. The adrenaline had kept the pain at bay I guess. I quickly cleaned it and bandaged it. I took some sleeping pills that night because I knew there was no way I was going to fall asleep on my own. The most bizarre thing is that when I woke up the next day and removed my bandage, there was no wound. It was a completely healed scar. Just a faint line of the large cut I had seen the night before. I still don't understand how that is possible. Ever since that night I've felt strange. I haven't felt like myself and it gets worse every day. It doesn't feel like a sickness, hell, I feel stronger than ever. It just feels like I'm not fully in control. All I know is that I can never go back to that spot. I still feel like I hear that howl every night in my dreams, but it has to be just a dream. Right? Thanks a lot for watching the video till the end, subscribe to our channel horror in detail. Drop your opinions slash suggestions in the comments section, and like the video as it helps with the YouTube algorithm.